your body. It's healing right now. This, you need a new liver. You need kidney. Just receive like the woman with the issue of blood. She reached out and she took that anointing. somebody and love somebody we're going to stay in this flow don't go too far worship team you guys uh, we're going to stay in this flow somebody say flow somebody say flow gave us a revelation right now and I think we're about to see the fastest growing church in San Diego because this morning we talked about prayer prayer and prayer produces souls there's going to be a revival of soul winning even dramas that were not effective all of a sudden they're going to become very effective the Lord's going to begin to give strategy and wisdom for soul winning like you've never known and watch what happens to families, friends, loved ones, neighbors this place will become too small overnight clap like you believe a revival of souls a revival of souls come on say more souls Jesus how many are believing God for your family your loved one your neighbor your co-worker souls and I want to just keep singing that song this is a movement I'm going to get in a little bit of the word just so we can get the word amen and we're going to get right back in give the worship team a big man this is me. <laughs> man. Come on, you can get, look, man, these guys have done a fabulous job all day. Well, you may be seated. Don't go far. We're going to pick it right up and say, God is, whoa. Felt like that. A drama was happening right now. I got shot in the drama. Come on. We were having a big thing we did at our church last two weeks ago. We had 1,042 salvations in three nights. Come on. That's exciting, right? But we had a gunshot, and the neighbors were calling, complaining, you know, like, they're shooting guns over there. Like, well, you know, whatever works to get people saved. Sometimes you have to scare the hell out of people. Come on. <laughs> Literally. God, it's good. <clears throat> Tonight, I'm going to talk to you for just a few minutes on a subject called the breakthrough anointing. How many want to walk in a breakthrough anointing? I said, how many want to walk in a breakthrough anointing? Now, when you talk about breakthrough, uh, in Isaiah 10, 27, it says, in that day, uh, Satan's burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. And so right there we find in scripture that when the anointing shows up, it gives us breakthrough. How many know we serve the God of breakthrough? That's why David said uh, he went to Baal Perazim and defeated the Philistines there. He says the Lord did it. He burst through my enemy like a raging flood. So he named that place Baal Perazim, which means the Lord who burst through or or the master of breakthrough how many know we serve the god that's the master of breakthrough amen how many are believing for breakthroughs i really feel like my, my assignment here this weekend is for breakthrough and i think i caught it 
I think what God is going to do next is it's going to be a, like a tidal wave of souls that he's going to send your way. How many are believing for souls, 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 souls? How many know we are soul winners and we are disciple makers? Clap like you believe that's true. But we serve the God of, say, say breakthrough. He's the God of breakthrough. And he's the master of breakthrough. That, mean, that means he has so many different ways to get us into a place of breakthrough. He's got a million ways to get us into a place of breakthrough. He's the master of it. One of the things about breakthrough you have to understand is when breakthrough shows up, and that anointing of breakthrough shows up, it does two things for you. The first thing that breakthrough does, it breaks you out of bondage. Breaks you out of addiction, breaks you out of insecurity, fear, complex, whatever the, the situation is. The, the break would only comes and it brings you out of the sickness. It brings you out of the disease. It brings you out of the addiction and fear, whatever. It brings, how many thank God that there's a freedom in the anointing to break us out? But that same anointing is also to break us in too. So when you're talking about breakthrough, it's not just coming out of bondage, but it's also breaking through into the promised land. So that same anointing works. So when the God's people came out of Egypt, how many know they needed a breakthrough? And when they had a breakthrough and they came out of what? Egyptian bondage. But how many know that wasn't God's perfect plan? God's perfect plan was for them to get into the promised land. And they needed a breakthrough to get in the promised land because Jericho was mocking them and was mocking their promise. But how many know that break the same anointing that got them out of bondage was the same anointing that got them into the promised land? And I see so many believers, they, they thank God for their freedom and the breakthrough of their freedom, but they stay there. How many know God doesn't want you just to break out of bondage? He also wants you to break into your promised land. And he wants your family to break into that promised land. And he wants our cities to break into that promised land. Clap like there's a breakthrough anointing. In Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 4, we find here where the breakthrough anointing is on full, man, full illustration. So Jesus uh, begins to preach this in Luke 4, 18, but it's the same scripture. And this is where it really goes into detail on what that anointing does, what that breakthrough anointing produces. In Isaiah 61, 1 through 4, it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. I mean, that's what Jesus said. He says, Because the Lord has anointed me to mashak me, to preach good news to the poor. So you know right there, and how many know Victory Outreach, we reach poor people sometimes. That's what we do. I don't know, unless in my church we do. And they're poor, spiritually poor, financially poor, emotionally poor. They're impoverished. But how many know there's an anointing to preach to the poor? Not everybody can minister to the poor. If you don't have an anointing, you can't do it. Because they're so blockade in their mind, they can't even hear anything. But when the anointing shows up, it breaks through the blockade and it begins to give them the hope that they need. And once they say, what's good news to the poor man? What's good news to somebody who's poor? Good news to somebody who's poor is, yes, you may have come through a generational curse of poverty, but because of the anointing, you don't have to be poor no more. How many believe that the anointing brings you out of poverty, but it also brings you into prosperity? Come on, somebody. How many are believing God for a financial increase in your life? How many know you may have started on welfare, but you're not going to stay on welfare. You're going to end in the promised land. Three claps and an amen, but there's an anointing of increase. And sometimes that anointing will get so strong in our services where you begin to sense the anointing of increase. And all of a sudden, financial miracles begin to break out. Because spiritual spirit, the, 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 the spirit of poverty is a real spirit. And when that anointing shows up, it breaks that poverty spirit and it releases the prosperity of God. There's even angels attached to prosperity. That's why when Abraham sent his servant, he said, the angel of the Lord will prosper your way. Over and over in the scriptures, you find God prospering his people when the angel showed up. How many know the anointing of God releases? angelic activity the anointing of God releases breakthrough the anointing of God brings us out of poverty and the anointing of God brings us into prosperity how many know when you get saved you, you begin to tithe and you begin to give to God you should expect increase in your life you should expect a more and more blessing you should expect financial increase you should make more this time next year than you did right now come on somebody say amen because the anointing of increase come on the anointing of increase is on your life that's a prosperity anointing. That thing shows up and it begins to prosper you. And it doesn't matter where you start. When we started, my family, we were very poor. Very poor. When I started serving God and I was in the men's home, my, my, my monthly, come on, men's home, shout, don't shout, don't, don't, don't get quiet on me, men's home. Come on. Our, our monthly, uh, uh, you know, income was the GR check. So we get the GR from El Monte office right there. And they'd give us $12 because they took the rest because that was our rent. And it got $12.27. And I started tithing with my little $12. I gave God a dollar, and I gave God another dollar and some change, whatever I had. 
I mean, and that's a lot of money when you only have twelve dollars. In the men's home, that goes a long way. That's like ten bars of soap. Come on, that's toothpaste, that's tuna, that's a spread, that's some, that's top ramen. Come on, yeah, I know you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm preaching. And I remember putting my little dollar in the offering, my other dollar, and then I give another dollar. That's an offering, and it's some change. That's an offering. And I remember the devil lying to me, saying, You're, "That's dumb. What are you doing? It doesn't even. The church doesn't need your money. All these kind of lies." And God says, "Listen, son, if you keep giving me two dollars, you'll be faithful with twenty dollars. If you're faithful with twenty, you'll be faithful with forty, forty, eighty, eighty, one hundred. Last year, I was able to give one hundred thousand dollars to the kingdom of God. That's a long way from GR. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I said that's a long way from GR. Come on." <laughs> How many know God will increase you? He'll prosper your life. More and more, he'll begin to increase you. We, my family, we came out of poverty and lack of sufficiency. But when that anointing shows up, it breaks the spirit of poverty. And it brings the bring increase in your life. How many know that's good news? We have good news to the poor. You don't have to be poor no more. Some people have a, sp a generational curse of poverty. It's like they can't break out of it. But thank God that we preach good news. That there's an anointing that breaks poverty. How many know some of you had a prison record and no one will hire you? The devil's a liar. You can hire yourself. Say amen, somebody. I said, say, you can have a business. You can be a business owner. How many believe you can be a millionaire and faithful and a soul winner and a disciple maker and a good husband and a good mate? Come on. Clap like you believe God can prosper your ways. The anointing shows up, and it also says right here, the anointing heals those that have a broken heart. Those that are broken hearted literally means those that their heart's been crushed. How many know you can get this glass and throw it down, and, and there's no way you're going to be able to put that glass back together. It's been shattered. And so many times when people come to Christ, I know when I did, my life was shattered. There was no super glue for what I went through. That rhyme, there's no super glue for what I went through. Come on. There's no therapist couch that would have can heal that mess. I would have went to a therapist couch and they would have said, yeah, insane asylum. Take these and see you next week year. Come on. There was no fixing that. There, there was no fixing that. You know, Humpty Dumpty fell and he broke. And, you know, ain't no fixing this Humpty Dumpty. This thing was shattered. This thing was gone. It was destroyed. How many know we serve the God that can get the broken pieces and raise something beautiful out of the ashes? Clap like there's an anointing to heal. Oh, come on. And that's why I feel in my heart that God has given you a beautiful anointing in this church. And it's beautiful that you got it. But how many know God wants this city to get touched with the anointing? And all these cities of the world, that's why Victory Outreach has been raised up. Because there's a special anointing in this house to bring prosperity to the poor. There's an anointing in this house to heal the brokenhearted. How many know we have testimony after testimony after testimony after testimony that no matter what you've gone through, no matter what the pain of your past was, no matter how many times you were dropped and abused and you were left for dead, how many know God can sit you at the table, Mephibosheth, and you can still eat from the king's table come on shout like we serve the god that can heal the brokenhearted goes on to say when the anointing shows up you it proclaims liberty to the captive liberty to the captive and opening of the prison to those that are in bondage so we that we know that anointing can set men free from any bondage they say once a drug addict, always a drug addict. Yes, without the anointing, but the anointing doesn't just get you free from drugs. It breaks the yoke of addiction. You don't confess, yes, I'm a drug addict. You know, you go to these meetings, I'm a drug No, you're not a drug addict. You're a new creation. And come on, in the name of Jesus, you'll never do drugs again. Why? Because who the sun sets free is free indeed. And there's an anointing from God that can set us free. Come on, clap like there's a breakthrough anointing. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. I remember I would try to quit. I would literally quit drugs every night. Why are you laughing? That's not funny. It is funny. Huh? You know, I was a tweaker. You know what tweakers are? So the tweakers, they take light bulbs and they clean them. And they, they get high on, with that. Put the speed and they burn it. So when you wish to go to my neighborhood, you drive down the block, and there was no light bulbs. And the neighbors would be out there trying to figure out what's going on with our light bulbs. We got like a weird thief. He just steals light bulbs. Because every night I'd, I'd get high with those light bulbs, and then I'd quit. I'd quit. I'd break it. But the next day, those drugs would call my name. 
because I was in bondage. I wanted to be free. I didn't want to be a drug addict. I didn't want to be in bondage. I didn't want to be the way I was, and I couldn't get free. But one day I stepped into a service like this, and that anointing showed up in my life, and I've never been the same ever since. <laughs> Glory be to God. I've seen drug addicts come to an altar, heroin addicts for 20 years. 30 years coming to an altar and in one altar call, never do drugs again. No man can do that. No therapist can do that. No court system can do that. Only the anointing of God can break the yoke. Now we're dealing with all types of bondages. A lot of our kids are coming in confused. They're little kids and they're telling them in school, you know, you might, if you think you're a boy and you're a girl, then maybe you're really a, a girl trapped in a boy's body or a boy in a girl. I don't know all this madness. And they're coming in confused. And they're coming in suicidal. And they're coming in oppressed. And they're coming in depressed. And they're looking for hope. But when they come to the church so many times, there's not enough anointing to break the yoke. But how many thank God, God has raised us up with an anointing that when the broken come, when the bound come, when the poor come, they can get free. He goes on to say, open the prison of bound, verse 3, to console or comfort those who mourn in Zion. To, look at this, to give them beauty for ashes. How I many know sometimes when people pass and people die, it, it breaks your heart. When you go through circumstance, it breaks the heart. And how do you put that back together when there's ashes or something's been burned out? How I many know God out of the ashes can raise up beauty and he's the only one that could do it? Look at our vision. Treasures out of darkness. There it is right there. Beauty out of ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You're still dealing with the anointing. How many know when we praise God, it lifts depression? When we praise God, it lifts. Why? Because when praises go up, what comes down? We say his presence comes down. What we're saying is the anointing comes down. If some people struggle with depression and oppression, I say sometimes you got to praise your way out of that. Sometimes in the middle of a situation, in the middle of a fearful problem, in the middle of oppression and depression, you just got to throw your hands up and give God praise. And as your praise goes up, the presence comes down and breaks depression. Then it goes on to say, here's the anointing that breaks us in due. They're going to be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Look at verse 4. And they shall rebuild the old ruins see you're still dealing with the anointing so the anointing the, the first phase of the anointing is dealing with deliverance and restoration but that's not where it stops now it goes into planting how I many know we're a church that plants churches we're a church that plants leaders we're a church that doesn't say that's fine you came out of bondage you came out of addiction all oh, that's so awesome yes it is awesome but that's not enough because there's somebody else that needs the freedom and the deliverance you got and freedom you receive freedom you must give so and i think that's that's the, some of the issues sometimes in the church we only stay in verses one through three but how many know we got to move from three and four we got to we got to live in there too they shall rebuild the old ruins. They're going to raise up the former desolation. They're going to repair the ruined cities and the desolations of many generations. How many know that's what we're dealing with in our ministries? The desolation of many generations. Grandpa was a bondage. Grandma was in bondage. Mom and dad were in bondage. The mom and th they're in bondage. The kids are in bondage. The grandkids in bondage. And then they come to our house. How many know we're anointed to deal with that? God has put an anointing on us to deal with these bondages. And out of these bondages, out of these ashes, out of these fetters, out of these chains, we raise up a generation of leaders. Come on, clap like there's a breakthrough anointing on this house. In Luke 8, 46, it explains that anointing beautifully. We got the woman with the issue of blood. She's sick. She's, she's been sick for 12 years. Because of her sickness, she's lost everything. And the Bible says that she reaches out and she touches the Lord. And when she touches him, she takes what? She receives that anointing. And when she receives it, the anointing gets inside of her. It cures her. And then, then it didn't stop there. It would have been a beautiful thing if it stopped there. But the Lord said, no, I'm not just going to heal you. I'm going to give you shalom, which means nothing missing and nothing broken. Because of your uncleanness, you lost your husband. You lost your property because it was expensive. You lost your children because you were unclean. You lost your dignity. You lost everything. But one encounter with the anointing gave it all back. Come on, thank God. God, that that anointing not only sets you free but it gives it all back and more give God a praise like God's anointing does that look at Psalms 92 10 David said the anointing did this in his life 
he says, but my horn or victory leadership influence, you have exalted like a wild ox because I have been anointed with fresh oil. So David testifies the anointing got me from the backside of the desert and the anointing has made me the king in the land and the anointing of God is what did it. How many know the anointing brings you out but you also have to have faith that that anointing will lift you up? Come on. How many know this is me preaching victory outreach? This is you right here. You exemplify this so beautifully that we don't just say, okay, come into the home, come get free. Oh, praise God. No. Now that you're free, you're going to get in the ministry. Now that you're free, you're going to be a soul winner. Now that you're free, you're going to be a disciple maker. Now that you're free, you're going to be part of the vision. How many th- so, and how many in this place can say, it's been amazing to see so many pastors and so many ministers and so many leaders raised up out of brokenness because that breakthrough anointing is able to accomplish the supernatural. Give God a praise like we believe in the breakthrough anointing. For the breakthrough received is the breakthrough given. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm a breaker. Not a heartbreaker. I'm a yoke breaker. That's the wrong neighbor. Turn to the other neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm a breaker. That's the right neighbor. Turn to the neighbor behind you, the happy one. Say, neighbor, I'm a breaker. Are you a breaker? Is there any breakers in the house? Not a heartbreaker, a chain breaker, a yoke breaker. Look at the scripture, it's so beautiful. Micah 2.13. It says in the, in the New, New Jerusalem 2000 version. That's a version. <laughs> the NJ, the New Jersey version, come on. <laughs> it says, the breaker shall go up before them. And they will break through and pass through the gate and go out by it. And their king will pass before them, the Lord at the head of them. So it says right here, the, 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 the Lord will go in the front. Then their king, their leader will be behind. And then behind them, there will be a group of people. But because the breaker's on the Lord, the, break, the anointing of the breaker comes on the king. And then the, the break anointing comes on the leadership. How many know the same anointing that's on the leadership is on your life? This is, there's an anointing on this church for breakthrough, but thank God it's not just for pastors and leaders. That same anointing that's on this house is on your life. Come on, say, I'm a breaker. Say it, I'm a, come on, say, I'm a breaker. Say, I'm a breaker. Praise and worship team, come up. We're going to pray for people. Somebody say amen. amen. How many want to get prayed for and receive an anointing tonight? Say, I'm a breaker. The word breaker, you can write this down. It comes from the Greek word, or this is actually the Hebrew word, parrots, parats. Parats, and it means you it means to say it with me say to break things open come on say it say to break things open to burst people out and into say i'm a breaker say where you go you open up atmospheres and you shift the culture so the people are able to receive from heaven somebody say i'm a breaker now listen to acts 10 38 it says god anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil for God was with him now when as I studied this it said God anointed Jesus of what of Nazareth I said I said why did you put that there Why, why did you put Jesus of Nazareth like Nazareth was known as like the ghetto of Jerusalem it's like the hardest area in, the, in, the, in Jerusalem. And God's like, I anointed Jesus of Nazareth. And I said, God, why would you put Nazareth there? I mean, you could have put any, why would you identify with that, with the anointing? And it's very clear when you, look, when you really study it, you realize, oh, because you didn't want us, when it came to the anointing, you didn't want us to just identify with his deity. You wanted us to identify with his humanity. So how God anointed, the Father anointed by the Holy Spirit, Jesus. So what he's saying to us, he said, what Jesus did in his earthly ministry wasn't done because he was the Son of God. He did it as a Son of Man anointed by the Holy Ghost. And he didn't do it 
See, so many times in our theology, when we were learning theology, we, we, it was like the miracles, the healings, the water walking, the five loaves too. We said, oh yeah, because he was the son of God. But right here, it's clearly in scripture. Jesus said it himself, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And here we find in the book of Acts, testifying that, that the God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. As, as, as a son of man by the Holy Spirit. Why did he do that? Because he was trying to show you, not trying to show off. He was trying to show you, you. Let me say it again. He wasn't trying to prove his deity. He didn't need to prove anything. What he was trying to do, he was trying to show you, you. That's why when he went to heaven, right before he went, he said, you're going to lay hands on the sick. And they're going to recover. You're going to cast out demons. He said, he said, if you drink deadly poison, it won't even be able to kill you. That's crazy supernatural stuff. You want to know why? Because the same anointing that was on Jesus is the same anointing that's on your life today. Can I get heavy on you now? Can I get heavy on you? And then we're going to pray. This is heavy. Let me say this. Matter of fact, stand on your feet. Come on. Somebody say, God is good. I said, Pastor, you're short-winded because I was long-winded this morning. <laughs> There was no clock, and I looked up, I said, oh my God, I just preached for an hour and a half. But it was a blessing. I believe the Lord was on that. But listen to me. This is heavy right here. Because so many times, so many times, we look at Jesus, and we should honor him and reverence him, and we look at him, and we put him in such a high pedestal, and we need to because he's our God. But at the same time, you have to understand, he came to model for us what we're supposed to be. Didn't he even say with his own mouth? The works that I do, you're going to do? Then he said something that I don't even understand it, but maybe I'll understand it when I get to heaven. He said even greater works. And I know I could identify that in a nutshell and just say, yeah, he's talking about the same thing but more. Even if you did the same thing, it would just be, how can I do that? It's not us, it's the anointing. See, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. God anointed Jason of Whittier. Come on now. <laughs> Clap like you got to, come on. Tell your neighbor, I'm a breaker. Come on, tell him, I'm a breaker. Are you ready for this? You ready for this or no? See or no? Say yes. Okay. So, so watch me. How many, how many know when we get saved, we're the woman with the issue of blood? See, we need to reach out and what? Yeah. We need to touch him because we need to what? We need to be cured. We, but, th but that's not where God wants you to end up. He wants you to be the one that they touch. Oh, no, 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 that's not, that's not, a, wait, wait, didn't Peter shadow? They just put sick folk on the street because just the anointing on them was so the shadow. Bam, 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 cripple started getting up. Come on, how many know God wants to raise you up as a miracle worker? God wants to raise you up as a sign and wonder worker? God wants to raise you up? No, that's for pastors. That's for, you know, that's for every believer shall cast out devils. Every believer shall heal the sick. Let's go deeper. Every Believer shall raise the dead. Jesus didn't come to show off. He came to show you, you. Say it again. He didn't come to show off. He came to show you, you. He came to restore what Adam lost. I'm getting too heavy. Come on, somebody. So many times we see ourselves as porosito. Hope I make it this month. It's gonna, I'm just going to hang in there, brother. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. Because when you first get saved, that's the way it is. But after a while, you begin to learn what you carry and who you carry. You begin to realize, you know what? I'm the temple of the Holy Spirit. Come on, I'm the temple, I'm the carrier of the Holy Spirit. And when I show up, I carry a power that shifts the atmosphere. And when the atmosphere shifts, demons got to go and the heavens show up. Come on, give God a shout like you're saying, I'm a breaker. Because you're a breaker. You don't settle for status quo. Christianity you demand nothing less than revival signs and wonders I teach our leaders all the time we have almost 400 small groups right now in our church 
Next month, we'll, January, first week of January, will be about, about 425. We'll have broken 3,000 wide open in small groups. And I tell our, and I teach them all the time this stuff. I teach them, I said, listen, I said, you're anointed. You don't need to call me to go to the hospital. You go to the hospital. Three claps and an amen. Come on. You go lay hands on them. You go raise them up. You rebuke that cancer. You rebuke that sickness. You rebuke death and say, back up. Yeah, when the doctor said no. God, and we say yes. I give him this quote. I say, listen. I said, when you start your homes, and you open up your home groups, I said, I said, don't let their death get on you. But you bring life and change atmosphere. The reason a lot of the groups weren't growing is because our leaders didn't understand their authority and the anointing they carry. So when the, you gotta remember, people come with unbelief. They come with friends attached to them. They come with devils attached to them. They come in bondage. And you have a room of five or six people and three of them are demonized. They're going to shift the atmosphere and the room's going to be cold. The home group's going to be dry. And, and you're not going to, you, you won't be able to put a finger on it, but nobody wants to be there. Because that devil has said, you can have a house group, but you're not going to break through. So we train our leaders, no, the same anointing that was on Jesus of Nazareth is on you. So when you open your mouth, all of a sudden the atmosphere, whoa. Oh, open your mouth and give them a shout. Tell your neighbor, say, don't let their death get on you. You carry the anointing. You're a breaker. Everywhere you go, you shift atmosphere. You change culture. You're a breaker. Come on, tell your neighbor you're a breaker. You don't settle for status quo Christianity. You demand nothing less than revival, signs and wonder. Come on, tell them you're a breaker. Tell them where you go. You break open the atmosphere. You shift the culture. Tell them you're a breaker. When you show up, people break out. People break into. You're a breaker. tonight we should launch at least a hundred groups because you're a breaker somebody shout I'm a breaker I believe the city of San Diego needs you to step up start praying for the sick start casting out devil not me yeah you cast out devil sometimes we're in a service and the devils will manifest and I say no 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 let, let the leaders cast them out how many know you should be casting out devil some of you have never cast out a devil you're scared. Oh, the devil. How many know you're not afraid of a devil? You're not intimidated by a devil. Why? Because you got an anointing on your life. You're a devil rebuker. You're a devil caster outer. You're a breaker. Shout, I'm a breaker. I'm a breaker. We were, uh, I remember this. The city of Whittier is where I was destroyed. God said, go back to Whittier. I said, Lord, they want to kill me. He said, everyone that was after your life is dead. Went back. I'm not saying God killed them. I'm just saying. <laughs> he told me, and I went back. And we started, and this is a testimony to this house, and this is what the anointing does. We started with just a handful of people, eight people. That was it. No money. I didn't even have a honey. I started the church single. But I had an encounter with God. I had an encounter with God after a year of praying. I had an encounter with God. I heard the voice of God. And God said, I heard the cries of the people. And now I'm going to send you to their Pharaoh to tell the Pharaoh of Whittier, your time is up. You have to let my people go. And I, I took that message. I went to my pastor. He, re he respects me highly. I've always been upright. I've always honored. I've always submitted. I said, Pastor, I had a vision from God. The Lord spoke to me to start, to start the church. And, and because and at that time I didn't want to start a church 
I was an evangelist. I like being an evangelist. You blow in, you blow up, you blow out. Come on, somebody. But a pastor, you got to be there. <laughs> and I've seen what my pastor went through. I'm like, uh-uh. I'll preach, but I don't know about all that. But after that encounter, how many know the revelation gives you access? After that encounter, my heart shifted. Everything in me changed, and all I wanted to do was pastor. I didn't even want to be an evangelist anymore. I just wanted to be a pastor because that, that God had spoken in my heart. Revelation. Revelation came. And then all of a sudden, I told my pastor, I said, the Lord told me to start the church. He's like, okay, Mio, you know, I know God spoke to you. He wouldn't just say it simply flippantly. Go ahead. And he said, when are you going to start it? I said, Sunday. He looked at me like you just looked at me. He goes, okay, vamonos. Let's go. He said, where's the members? I said, well, I got my staff. I got eight. Well, I got four. And then I had, I had to get four more because I had to get a worship team. So... I had to find a worship leader, you know what I mean? So I had a friend, he was crackhead a little bit, but he was a good keyboard player. Pioneer, baby, you got to play. And then my, and my drummer, my drummer, he was a little rebellious spirit on him. He, I think he loved smoking a little weed. And I had a singer who was like a hippie. He was Christian, but he was a hippie, you know what I mean? And he would swing his guitar like Elvis. It was a trip, man. So you three are my members now. And then, and then there was another guy that's you know, crazy, and, and then the four staff and I said okay let's start it let's go I preached like there was 20,000 people <sighs> it was in a place called the Bluebird Art Lounge and it wasn't really an art lounge you know how they have art they have ugly art but they say it's nice I get, but this was like ugly art that they were trying to call nice but it wasn't nice and 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 then and, 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 and it was it was 120 degrees and I'd wear a suit you know because I like to dress up have my suit <laughs> Man, I swear, I'd look like T.D. Jakes after I preach. I sweated that thing out. This, and I had to take that thing straight to the cleaners. I couldn't afford it, so I washed it. But, you know, it is what it is. Pioneer, man. You got to pioneer. You got to pay the price. Come on. And then we had, like, children's church. Where were you to children's church? I said, man, we got a room. There's only one room. I said, well, we don't want the kids distracting service. I said, well, there's an alley out there. We'll put a little fence up, and we'll put, like, a... We gotta get a pulpit on that, or like a, like a little platform. I said, "Well, there's some pallets over there. Put the pallets, and uh, there's a pulpit right there. Let's go." And she showed this church. What a way to launch a church! But you know what we had? We didn't have money. We didn't, we didn't even have congregation hardly, but we had an anointing. And I started preaching to the atmosphere. I said, I started talking to the atmosphere. And I said, Pharaoh! I said, Pharaoh! You've been in my city long enough. Your time is up. You've got to let my people go. And authority. I feel like running up in here. I feel somebody's receiving a fresh anointing tonight. Atmosphere. Authority recognizes authority. And when a greater power came in, I come to take down a strong man because a stronger one in me showed up. And that enemy had my city locked down. And he said, We ain't gonna let it go. I said, You filthy animal, you ain't got a choice. I ain't asking you, I'm telling you, you got to go. And the devil's like, well, what? How are you gonna make me? I got not only delegated authority, I got power to make you go. Oh, Rabbi Shah. It was funny because, like, we had a beautiful keyboard player. My keyboard player would, he, he would go on binges. And it was always Saturday night. Hello. You know what a binge is, right? It means he would go MIA on me. And it would be early in the morning. We'd be praying. I said, Where's Stephen? They said, Pastor, he. He's all nighter. But MIA. I said, oh man, he's at the crack house again. I'll go get him out, shower him up. Come out, you crack devil. Yeah. Now get the keyboard. Let's go. Sometimes I had a. <laughs> he would play so anointed, boy. <laughs> now I don't recommend that. Come on. Now, now we have vetting systems and we make it. We have protocol, but it was what it was. It was raw. But you know what? It went from eight people to 20. And then it went from 20 
and had a rebellious person and it split down to eight again. <laughs> but then all of a sudden it started growing, eight to 20 to 30 to 40. I remember when we broke our first hundred. Oh, I was so excited. I was so excited. So many precious souls. People started getting free. I remember one girl. Can I just talk? Stay standing because I'm standing. This one girl comes up, Raquel. I used to sell drugs to Raquel. And Raquel comes with Danny. Danny was like a made man. He was like, you know certain gangsters you see, and, and even though they're saved, they still look scary. <laughs> you don't know nobody like that. Okay, well, that's cool. It's just they got that look like, oh man, that guy, I don't know. He's, I think he's saved. I hope he's saved. Like, yeah, he's saved. He loves it. <laughs> and Danny was like that look. He had tattoos from his eyebrow to his toenail. You know what I mean? They said like, kill your mama. Come on. I was like... <laughs> And they, she, came, she brought him as her muscle. Because you have to understand, I, 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 I had rock. Oh, well, let me say it this way. Are we recording? Yeah? Okay. Why well, didn't do anything to her? But, you know, she was not happy with me for some reason. So they came, they found out Jason Lozano has a church. So obviously she don't believe it. Because she's like, he, he, no one like you can change. So she shows up to the church with Danny, he's packing. She comes up to me, she goes, I know all this is a front. You're selling drugs out of here. Ain't no one like you can change. Give me the drugs. Give me the money you owe me. And I'm like, and the service is going to start. How many know the anointing is the anointing? It's like, okay, I can't convince her. I said, so I'll, I'll tell you what. Stay here. Get in the service in the front row. After the service, I'll take care of you. All right. And she sits there all, and about 20 minutes in, she realizes, uh-oh, this guy's serious. And that anointing just started working on her. Danny ran out and he got arrested that night and went to prison five years. Now Danny's a small group leader. But you know what? That day, when the service over, she's like shaking up. She's like, what, is, what just happened? I said, come on, let me take care of you now. We took her in the back and I said, shut I dropped her in the Holy Ghost. She started squirreling like a snake. Ah, demons coming out. Ah, ah. Free. She got free. She got saved. She became a leader, usher, everything. Come on, somebody. And that story has happened over and over and over and over. Now we have three or four thousand. We are in the middle of a move of God. Come on. We're, we're it's literally shaping the world right now. Thousands of churches are coming to learn what we're doing in Queen here. But what are they coming? They realize God has done something. But you know what it is? I said, you know what, Pharaoh? You ain't got no power. I got the power. I'm a breaker. I shift culture. I change atmosphere. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is on my life. Come on, somebody clap. Like if we can take a city, you can take your family. I don't care what Pharaoh. I don't care what addiction. I don't care what bondage. There is an anointing from God. Somebody shout, I'm a breaker. I want to I want to pray for people tonight. I want to put this anointing on somebody. Who wants to be used by God? Nope. Three of you. Who wants to be used by God? But before we pray for people, I want to pray. I want to pray for a few people. And then we're going to pray for everybody that wants that anointing tonight. I believe things are going to happen tonight bodies say amen to that but I feel like the Lord wants me to do this real quick and I'm going to pray for three groups of people real quick and the first group of people I want to pray for you're in this place and I'm going to start this prayer with a question for you and maybe most of you are Christian and you're right with God but I feel like there's a few here that need to hear what I'm going to say right? I think it's just one is worth it I want to pray for people in this place today say Pastor Jason if I asked you this question if you left church tonight God forbid somebody had too many to drink and they hit your car and you died or maybe your heart stopped you died are you ready to go to heaven 
when you die because so many people think that they're ready and they're not ready they think that they're ready because they go to church there's nothing wrong with going to church you should go to church the Bible says go to church but going to church won't get you to heaven when you die other people say well pastor I'll, I can get to heaven when I die because I'm a good person there's nothing wrong with being a good person you should be a good person but nowhere in the Bible does it say because you're a good person you get to go to heaven when you die it's not in the Bible as a matter of fact the Bible said at your best it's like a filthy dirty rag you can't earn your way into heaven you can't buy your way into heaven that's the epitome of religion others say but pastor I believe in God that's good you should but even demons believe they're not going to heaven others say but pastor I was raised in church I went to Sunday school catechism I was dedicated as a child all good but nowhere in the Bible they say raised in church or Sunday school or catechism or wearing religious jewelry will get you to heaven when you die no Jesus Christ said it very clearly there's only one way to heaven when you die it's not my way it's not some well-meaning preacher or even a priest's way it's Jesus Christ's way and Jesus said if you're going to get to heaven when you die then you must be you have to be born again you say pastor what does that mean simply means you've given Jesus Christ all of your heart and all of your life if you were to die and you were not born again you would not go to heaven when you die you would go straight to hell and somebody needs to love you enough and respect you enough to tell you the truth you must be born again and tonight I love you enough and I just respect you enough to tell you the truth you must be you have to be born again and people say, well, I'm not going to serve no God that sends men to hell. Come on. we got to be smarter than that. God sent his only son to be murdered on a cross so you can go to heaven, believe in him, and receive him. He paid the price so you never have to go to hell. And if you reject God's only way to heaven, that's not God's fault. That's not a God that's out trying to get people to hell. That's a God that's trying to get people to heaven. But if you reject God's only way to heaven, that's your fault. You see, hell was never created for mankind. See, the devil looked at God and said, I don't want you or anything to do with you. And God said, fine, I'm going to make a place called hell for those demons and those fallen angels. It's not meant for mankind. That's why God sent his only son to die on the cross. So you could be born again. You could receive him as your Lord and Savior. So the first group of people I need to pray for today, you're in this place. Maybe you're visiting. Maybe your friend brought you. But you need to be born again. You need to get right with God for the first time. I need saints praying softly with me. I need faith in the room right now softly very softly you need to get born again you need to get right with God for the very first time in a moment I'm gonna to count to three I'm gonna say one two three when I say three and if that's you I, want you I want you to raise your hand high and bold like this you say I don't want to raise my hand like that I'm gonna be embarrassed maybe probably but I'd rather be embarrassed in a room full of people that are gonna love and support me than get to heaven and God say I'm sorry I cannot let you in for the Bible said if you deny God in front of man, he denies you the entry to heaven. Don't let the fear of man stop you from raising your hand. Don't let the pride of life stop you. Today's your day to get born again. Number one, I want you to raise it to God. And number two, raise it so I know who I'm praying for. So when I count to three, I want you to raise your hand high and raise it. Both hands are already going up. The second group of people I want to pray for tonight are those that say, Pastor, I've walked with God before, but today, Pastor, I need to get right with God again. I need a fresh start, Pastor. I need a second chance with God. I need a fresh start with God. If that's you when I count to three, I'll be my honor to pray with you too. Maybe you're a backslider and you need to come back home. God says I'm married to the backslider. Being backslidden is the worst place to be in because you're too saved to enjoy the world. You, you, you're too, but, but, you, but you, know, you know too much about God to enjoy the world. You, you're in limbo. No, you need to come home like the prodigal son. God's been waiting for you to come home, to get born again, to get rededicated to God. So when I count to three, if that's you, you need a fresh start with God. I want you to raise your hand high and bold. And the third group of people I need to pray for tonight are for those that say, Pastor, I want to be a member of this church. I want to join. I want to join Victory Hour San Diego. I want to join this church. I want to be part of this church family. If that's you, I want to pray with you too. So at this time, every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around, one of these three people, number one, you need to get born again, or 
you need a fresh start with God, you need a second chance, or you say, Pastor, I want to be part of the Victory Outreach family in San Diego. When I count to three, raise your hand high, embrace it bold. Some of you are asking yourself the question, I wonder if he's talking to me. If you have to ask yourself that question, my friend, the answer is yes, I'm talking to you. But above all, the Holy Spirit is talking to you. Every head bowed, every eye closed, saints praying softly. If you're one of these three, when I count to three, raise your hand high, raise it bold. Hands are already going up. Are you ready? On three. One, two, three. Lift your hand all over the room. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. Anyone else? Keep your hands up. Thirty. I see your hand. Anyone else? Five more seconds. Just put your hand up. Four more seconds. Anyone else? Anyone else? Three more seconds. See, I need to get born again. Or I need a fresh start with God. Or I want to join the church. Anyone else? Two more seconds. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I see your hand. God bless you. God bless you. Please, no clapping yet. God bless you. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Anyone else? All right. You that have your hands up, look at me. You have your hands up. It'd be my greatest honor to pray for you now. This is what I need you to do. If you raise your hand for those three things, one of those three things, and you're serious, so is God and so am I. That's what I want you to do. I want you to get your purse and your belongings and whoever you came with, I want you together to get out of your chair, get in the nearest aisle and meet me right here. I'm going to pray for you now. Victory Outreach, bring your friends, bring your family, bring your loved ones. Say, I want to get born again. Come on, now we clap. Now we celebrate. Let's encourage them as they come. Come, 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 come. If you raise your hand, come. If you raise your hand, come. Come on, encourage them, Victory Outreach. Come on, encourage them, Victory Outreach. If you raise your hand, come. If you raise your hand, come. You say, I need to get born again. You say, come on, come on, come on, worship team. Come on, music. If you raise, come on. You say, I need to get born again. You say, I need a fresh start with God. You say, I need a second chance with God. Or, I want to be a member of the church. Raise your hand. Come, 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 come. Here they come. Come on, Victory Outreach, clap. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Come on, clap, Victory Outreach. This is what it's all about. This is the move. Come on. Keep this is, keep this is a move. Keep coming, keep I need to get born again. I need a fresh start with God. I need a second chance with God. I'm a backslider. Nick, come on, or you want to be a member of the church? This is a move. Anyone else? This is a move. This is a move. This is a move. 